So this figure shows two parallel non-conducting rings with their central axes along a common line. Uh, ring 1 has a uniform charge Q sub 1 and a radius of R, uh, and ring 2 has a uniform charge Q sub 2 and the same radius R. The rings are separated by a distance of 3 times R, and the net electric field at point P, which is on the line coaxial with both rings, is zero. So the net electric field here is zero. We want to find the ratio of the charge of ring one to the charge of ring two. Now, as derived in the textbook chapter, uh, the formula for the electric field at a point on the axis of a circular line of charge is given by this formula right here. The field is equal to Q times Z, where z equals the, the distance on the coaxial line between the center of the ring and the point, divided by uh, 4 pi epsilon naught, so basically multiplying it by k, times uh, z squared plus r squared to the power of 3 halves. And that is the formula that was derived for the electric field at a point in a situation like this. Uh, but in this situation, however, uh, note that r refers to the radius of the ring, and z is the distance between the point and the center of the ring, as I mentioned a second ago. So in this case, if we just focus on uh, the electric field due to the left ring, then z and r are actually the same, because as this diagram shows us, the distance between P and this ring is R, the exact same variable, the exact same length as the radius of the circle. So we can write uh, the electric field due to the left ring a bit more simply here. And now I've written it this way, where I have substituted an R in for Z. And the problem also tells us that the distance between both circles, D, is three times R, the distance between uh, one of the circles and the point P. Uh, so this means that there are two other R's effectively here along the way. And we can use this to see that uh, the distance between the right ring and point P is 2R. And we can use this to find a formula for the electric field due to the right ring. And now, for the electric field due to the right ring, I've subbed in 2R for Z. And notice that I've also used Q sub 1 and Q sub 2 to refer to the charges due to those rings. Now, the problem tells us that the electric field, or the net electric field, at point P is 0, meaning that the electric fields from each ring must have equal magnitudes at point P in order to cancel each other out. So now we set the fields equal to each other. Uh, so now I've set the electric field at the left equal to the electric field due to the right ring. And now we can start canceling out some variables, uh, like these R's at the top will cancel out here in the numerator. And uh, so will the, the terms 4K as well. Additionally, I have also summed up the R squared in the denominator. Uh, r squared plus r squared is equal to 2r squared, of course. And uh, in this case, uh, the square of 2r is going to be 4r squared. So 4r squared plus r squared is then 5r squared. And uh, remember, we're looking for the ratio of q1 to q2. So let's divide both sides of this by q2 and multiply uh, this 2r squared to the power of 3 halves on both sides as well. Now, we can simplify this even further by realizing that uh, something to a power divided by something to that same power uh, can be written as though it's all to one power, like this. And now we can see that the r squared will cancel out as well. And now, all of a sudden, all our variables are gone. We just have some constant numbers now. So we can pretty easily just plug this into our calculators and find an answer of about 0 
And that is roughly what the ratio is of the charge on ring 1 to the charge on ring 2.